Hello and welcome everyone. This is Veronika Klausova, Cisco NetSec Technica Marketing Engineer. In this demo, we are going to showcase configuration steps that are required in order to classify traffic based on source and destination security to group stacks assigned to the flow. Before we start, let's discuss what is SGT, Security Group Tag. The Security Group Tag SGT is a 16-bit value that may be added to the layer 2 header of the packets that ingress into a network through the device that support Cisco TrustSec Security CTS specification. This stack is then used to determine security and other policy to be applied to it. We can define a firewall rules to apply policy to a flow based on source SGT assigned to the flow since very early 5 power releases, more specifically Cisco 5 power for defense 6.1 version. In order for this feature to work, an external device such as Cisco switch must be installed in the network and configured to tag traffic with SGTs before the traffic reaches to the next generation firewall, our 5 power for defense FTD. This feature works with and also without ICE integration to FMC. Without ICE integration, source SGTs can be configured manually in the object management section or directly through the AC rule creation that we are going to demonstrate in a moment. Let's jump into the configuration. Right now, we are going to create the SGT name to SGT tag mapping directly through the AC rule creation, where we select Add Security Group Tag button and enter SG name, optionally provide description and tag ID under SGT ICE attributes AC rule tab. The existing SGT tags can be later modified or fully removed when not used from the Object Object Management FMC configuration section. Newly created SGT tag can be selected and added to the rule as the criteria that needs to be matched for this rule. After entering the rule criteria details, we can save the rule and save the whole access control policy setting. This is all what it takes in order to recognize inline SGTs or tags, source SGT tags that are in layer to header of the packets that are passing through the FTD device. As you can see, under Identity Sources tab, there was initially non-identity source defined, which confirms that the source SGTs that we previously created were without ICE integration first. However, since in this demonstration we would like to leverage and test the traffic classification based on both source and destination SGTs, we are going to integrate this FNC with the ICE node in the network. The ability to create access control policy rules with destination SGT criteria has been added as of Cisco Firepower 6.5 release. SGTs are used in security policies instead of defining network groups or individual user identities. FMC and all connected devices learn about this dynamically over PXGrid protocol. There is no need to deploy any policies when the SGTs or the mappings changes on the I side. Therefore, in starting from 6.5 release in FMC integration tab under identity sources, we can notice two configuration options such as session directory topic and SXP topic. Using session directory topic option, ICE provides to FMC user identities user IP mappings for passive user authentication. SXP topic subscription 
needs to be enabled in order to obtain IP to SGT mappings from ICE to FMC that distributes it further to all connected devices. Now we are going to review all prerequisites that needs to be enabled or configured on the ICE side in order for source and destination SGT tagging to be working in this particular integration deployment. So, as a first step, we need to make sure that under particular ICE node, PXGrid service is enabled. However, whether this PXGrid service is actually up and running can be confirmed through the ICLI by leveraging show application status ICE command. The next thing that we need to configure are SGT tags. So, for sake of this demo, we are going to create two SGT tags. One is named user and second is named servers. To each of those SGT tags, we are going to assign specific IP addresses. So we are going to create something called static IP to SGT mapping. ICE can be learning actually about those IP to SGT mappings dynamically from the switches. However, for simplicity of this demonstration, we are going to configure static IP to SGT mappings on the ICE that will be published to the FMC, which then distributes further to all connected devices. So, first IP to SGT static mapping would be for IP address 50.50.50.101, to which we are going to assign previously created SGT tag users. The second IP to SGT static mapping would be for IP address 192.168.25.46. And to this IP address, we are going to assign another previously configured SGT tag named servers. Now, since we have created IP to SGT mappings, we need to make sure that ICE will publish them over SXP topic to the FMC. This can be reviewed or configured under work centers, TrustSec settings, SXP settings, where there is checkbox for publish SXP bindings on PX grid. So this needs to be enabled. Just keep in mind when enabling this option, the SXP service will restart. Again, we can validate whether the service is up and running through the ICLI show application status ICE command. The next step is to configure on the ICE at least one SXP device if it is not present yet. The need for the SXP device configuration is required in order for ICE to publish IP to SXP mappings to the FMC. This is need required due to the current ICE design. However, this SXP device is just temporary device. It is dummy IP address that doesn't need to exist in the network. However, this configuration setting will just make sure that the mappings are published from ICE to FMC. So for Configuring of this SXP device, we can use any IP address, even the one that is not routable in the network. We can select any peer role. We select the configure PSN node, the domain, and the password type none. When after saving this configuration, the status for SXP device needs to go from unknown to off. This is typically fast, change however occasionally it can take a couple of minutes so just make sure to refresh the screen in order to see that the status went from unknown to off state now with this we have configured all prerequisites on the ice side and we can confirm what ip to sgt mappings are published from the ice 
under Work Center Trusec SXP All SXP Mapping section. If this table is empty, it means the ICE didn't try or publish the IP to SGT mappings. There needs to be the entries displayed that the ICE actually published to the connected or integrated devices over P SXP topic. Now with this we can move on into the configuration of FMC and finalize our access control rule set with both source and destination SGT tags. So on FMC we navigate to access control policy and create access control rule that will be used to test source and destination SGTs with the real traffic flows. Uh, so we can create or edit existing rule. We are going to leverage in this particular access control rule the tags that we created previously on the I side. So for source SGT, we will use user as an SGT tag. The destination SGT tag will be servers. And we can then optionally enable the logging at the beginning and end of the sessions and provide the name of the access control rule to be SGT rule example. We save the access control rule and we save the access control policy and deploy the configuration and wait for the deployment to complete. Upon which we can validate with the real user traffic whether our configure rule works and that the SGT tags are present in the connection events table. Now we are ready to validate our configuration of the access control rule with both source and destination SGTs and make sure that we are triggering this rule with real user traffic. Therefore, for one of the user machines, we are generating the traffic towards the one of the web servers. And as you can see in the screen, the website of the server is displayed, so the connection was allowed. So we suppose to hit the configure the rule that has as a criteria source SGT users and destination SGT servers, because we have configured action for such traffic flow as allow, so therefore it should be permitted. In order to find evidence, we can search through the connection events database and filter the events based on the source and destination SGT criteria. And here we, we can see that both source and destination SGT tags has been detected in our traffic flow that we have generated and that we triggered the SGT example rule that has action allow. This concludes our demonstration. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video.